Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, if you didn't catch the video yesterday, picked up this sweet new R32 GTR. Make sure you go catch that one. But in this video, even though it was filmed on the same day as the last one, it was long, so I split it into two. We are going to do our very first rips in the car and go experience what a big HKS turbo setup from the era feels like for the very first time. So it's a lot of fun and I'm excited for you guys to live through it with us. Time to test this thing. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple rips around the compound, make sure it feels safe, then we'll pull it out on the main road. Let this thing eat. thing about this car without even driving it it's got an r34 six speed um if you don't already know this my r34 actually has r32 gears in it it's like the best thing you can do to a gtr 411s in the front and the rear with the six speed brings the ratios way closer together and the car just will feel a lot more zippy and you won't have lag between gears dude that turbo spools decent it's not bad like just like kind of rolling in a little bit i'm still used to that quick spool from the garret you know but like it's in, go, it's, yeah. in, it's in positive pressure. We'll let it warm up first. Do you run an e-commerce site? Do you sell things online? Congrats, if you made it through the holiday season, it can get pretty hectic. But now is not the time to start slacking on customers' orders, returns, exchanges. You gotta stay on top of that stuff. And one solution that helps conveniently happens to be the sponsor of today's video. ShipStation. ShipStation is the shipping solution to use. You can automate just about any shipping task, you can get access to their deeply discounted rates, and you can import sales orders from almost any channel, whether it's Amazon, Etsy, your Shopify, whatever you happen to use. You're gonna save a lot of time on how it funnels all the orders into one. You're gonna save a lot of money on how it lets you compare all the shipping rates. It's especially convenient when you're keeping track of returns and exchanges and stuff, but let's hope you don't have any of those because your product's the best. Before we started using ShipStation, our shipping situation at LZMFG was a mess. It completely transformed the way we did things. I think a friend of ours actually recommended it to us. We've never looked back since. 98% of companies also that use ShipStation for a year never look back. Ship more and less time with ShipStation. All you gotta do is go to shipstation.com slash AdamLZ. That will get you 60 days to try ShipStation for free. I promise you it will change your life. That's two months of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to shipstation.com slash AdamLZ and go make ship happen. Thank you ShipStation for sponsoring this video. Always appreciate you. Yeah. Car's pretty stiff. Yeah. I mean, they do probably had it all set up to like... No clunking? I'm like yeah, pretty not. stoked. Yeah. The worst thing that we found on this car so far was the dent in the front quarter. Right. Or sorry, the front fender. Clutch grab's decently high. It sounds pretty neat, my guy. It sounds so like stock DDM, but it's supposed to make 500. I think it. I think it's gonna rip. I really do. I'm yeah. just warming her up. Nice. He's scared. We're letting it warm. He's We're letting it warm up, oil. bro. My oil water temp's only 70 degrees Fahrenheit. His thermostat. Where's the gauge at? Yeah. You sure it's not Celsius? Yeah. No, it is Celsius. I know that. Frank? So, it yeah, sounds so mellow. That cat's gotta go. <laughs> oh, it's, it's gonna have some fun in it. That's for sure. Oh, you know what's great that we get to experience what like a late 90s early 2000s tuner this is it like i think I'm, I'm more excited for this car just for this moment right now right to feel it for the first time versus having it all built with all new stuff right because it's all old technology like yeah analog gauges and normally i wouldn't buy a car that's been already modified but the six speed kind of sold me on it and it seemed like it would be a fun experience. God, this trans feels so much better than the yeah. 34 one. I wonder if it has a shifter on it or if it's the actual trans. I don't know. Missing third. Oh, it's decent. Yeah, it does. Definitely not as fast as I thought. 
All right, time to put some ethanol in it. Turn the boost up. All right, we have a boost gauge. You need to watch it and tell me what we're hitting. All right. Let's see how many bars. All right, ready? There you go. <laughs> Keep it like this for a while. I know it's not bad. It just it's oh, we, did we look at the boost gauge? Or did no, we forget? <laughs> we'll yeah, do it again. Forget, yeah. <laughs> Try the different modes. It's got, it's got different oh, boost they, modes. You just moved it to it yeah. So half. now it's in. No, it, it was oh. in one. So let's try two. See if two feels faster. We'll try three, and then we'll try four. Yeah, you hit one point two, almost one point two. So right that there. one was faster. Yeah. All right, let's go to three. Stick it facing forward and then I'm gonna let him see a launch one, two, three. Okay. It feels like it moves. I bet it makes 480 wheel. My butt dino tells me we're about 420. She's getting spicy. Is that good? It's pretty fast. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Don't talk <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. It's a don't talk Fresh <laughs> off the boat. It doesn't look fast. And some fuel. Even Mike it said breaks. it doesn't look fast. It's fast. Yeah, this clutch likes a little launch. Oh. oh my god. Not bad. No, this thing is actually like pretty fast. You gotta drive it fast, but yeah, that was good. Damn. Definitely making upper fours. Yeah, for sure. Fresh off the boat, spicy. Yeah, it's like 
<laughs> like the transient's pretty good too. Bro. Like if this was a track car. Yeah, it rips. God, this thing's Jesus fun. Jesus Christ. Jesus. This you hear so the heat take? You hear the heat take, you hear the water, you hear like. Dude, you know what's so funny about this? Ass. The Australians are gonna be watching this, and like, this is the same experience they had like 10 years ago, bringing right. over their first 32s with like old technology. Like, yo, this is the best thing ever. Yep. This is sick. So, we just got a package back from New GDM. Yeah. And it's pretty much all the sick plated stuff. Um, we had some stuff, Vapor Home, right here, like OEM parts. This is still good. Clean that up for us. That piece that I modified and welded. <coughs> and then the lower oil pan. Or the oil the upper oil pan. Also got um vapor home. So it's gonna be nice to have something this clean on the JC. Mm -hmm. So we're kinda giving the same treatment that we did on the SR20. Just like you seen coated those too. Or yeah. Very nice. Just like brand new OEM Toyota mm -hmm. parts. So now that we got all this, we could I could finish assembling the long block, the motor and all that. Um, and then I'm gonna jump back into the engine bay. I already started uh, putting back some things together. I don't think we showed that we sprayed the uh, wiper towel. We went as far as like taking this apart, remove the rubber grommet, which is still in good shape. Uh, prep this and then hit it with some trim bumper paint, uh, black to be exact, and touched it up and it looks really good. Uh, we sent, we got the wipers uh, also uh, powder coated, uh, OEM look. So once it's, all that is together, it's gonna look really good yeah, together. It's gonna look brand new. Yeah. Um, I always hate when these old JDM cars have faded and right. like, powdery looking wiper cowls. Lost. Like, looks like melted snow yeah. that just got stuck there. So far what I've done, I've been putting all these rubber grommets back in place. Master, brake booster, brake master. A couple of more things, we're doing the ABS lead and we're using Odyssey Fabs uh, ABS delete blanket. So we'll show you guys more of that when we get to it, but that could get done. Then the car could get reassembled and put back together. Dan was here. He let us off. He left us a small present. Well, multi most presents, but uh, that's his uh, billet timing belt tensioner. Thing Sick. For the 2JC. Oh, yeah. It's nice and fancy. We're finally going to put it to good use and just put it in the venue. Good morning guys, uh, I have a cycle bath. Got an opportunity to be a part of a shoot last minute. Even though I'm going to St. Louis for four days this weekend for the St. Louis Auto Show where you guys will see me drive my first ever demo with Vaughn. Well actually it's not my first ever demo. First ever demo as an RTR driver with Vaughn. 
um, it would be cool to see you guys out there. Uh, yeah, so I can't really, I don't think I could talk about that opportunity. It was cool. I got to uh, be a part of a panel where I represented the car modifying community as a whole. It was just cool. It kind of forced me to talk about some stuff that I feel like I don't normally talk about. And one thing in particular is a lot of you guys are joining the channel. You might not understand why there's so many builds and everything, but in the end of the day, all these cars, all these projects, they tell a story of my automotive journey. Progression as a driver, progression with knowledge on a certain chassis and progression of the scale and level that we're able to produce as a shop is really freaking cool. But today, uh, I am so excited to get the R32 on the dyno. The boys got it all set up, pulled the front prop shaft, it's hooked up to the main line. All I gotta do is show up, turn the computer on, let it warm up, and I wanna see what it makes. My guess, it's not gonna be a pretty curve, and it's not gonna make a lot of torque. I feel like it's probably gonna make like 400, maybe a little bit less than 400 foot pounds of torque. But I think it is, I don't wanna say 500 wheel, cause I think that's that's uh, being a little bit generous. 481, which would be pretty sick, but let's see. I just wanna get a baseline. I wanna put on ethanol with the current setup, turn the boost up, see what it makes at like 30 pounds. Before that, I want a baseline. I wanna see what the car was making in Japan on the ECU that it's on right now, just to know. In the future, I gotta remind myself, the whole red eye thing and then uh, working immediately the day after with only sleeping a few hours on the plane, doesn't really work. I tried to take a nap didn't really work, so caffeine it is today. Let's see how long it lasts for I take a need a nappy boy. Luckily, I got tuned in a sweet R32 to wake me up. Well, I'm not tuned in, just dying running. I wanna get out of myself. All right, she's all set up, ready to rip. Warming her up, gonna set up the dyno. Let's see how she does. Ugh. Big dyno guy. You got it? Yeah, bro. This is your hunt. Oh, you already know, my bad. Yeah. yeah. Hey dog. What up? Yeah, we good. Damn. Yo, get it, what, bro? I said 481 horsepower in this video. Do you remember when we were in the car and I said I thought it made like 350 foot pounds torque? Yeah, you're dead on. That's funny. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay that with the R34 and it's gonna be hilarious. So what you'll probably see when we put the R34 on here, in addition to having smaller twins and having V-cam, the torque is gonna come in a lot sooner, which will kind of broaden this power curve. Because the torque gets silly, that's why we don't start making peak power until what, like 7,500 RPM? And then interestingly enough, it starts to fall off, so. Our peak power is probably going to be around this region. Once we put some ethanol on it, it'll probably, probably fatten this up a tiny bit. But then the torque will just, I don't know, it'll be fun. So as you can see by the graph, the R34 makes more power everywhere. everywhere. So even turning up the boost on this setup, it's still going to be crazy and efficient, but it will be fun. Um, more of an experiment than anything, just to see what an old setup would make on modern fuel and some new ECU technology. All right, so now is the point where we go over the car and we start to upgrade a couple little things. And by that, adding some E85 safe line, upgrade the fuel pump, getting rid of the cat, because right now it still has a catalytic converter on it. So that right there is going to free up some horsepower. Um, and just making sure this thing's ready to support another 100 horsepower. This, is, this thing's got to go, otherwise... You know, the, the intake line. We gotta put a little catch can in there or something. Oh, did you say Home Depot sells new thing? Yeah. Well, yeah, we have some outside hooked up to the faucet. Yeah. Love that. Love to see it. <laughs>
We got great news about my fuel pump. Tell them about my fuel pump. I'll tell them about your fuel pump. My fuel pump. So, um, one of the things we want to do is add a relay to the fuel pump and straight from, to add battery source from the battery directly to the pump. If you don't do that, your tuner will be very mad at you because there's like a parasitic loss in a lot of S chassis, R chassis, wiring harnesses to where the fuel pump might only be seeing like 11 volts or so and one to two volts can make a huge difference in how much flow you can get out of a pump, like hundreds of horsepower. So very important, do a relay. But what'd you find? So I was looking and I checked the plugs and oddly enough, it looked like too big of a gauge, but I'm like, it's a GTR, it's OEM, whatever. So I started putting the wire and then I noticed that it's definitely not OEM. And I saw a zip tie there and then zip tie here. So I just follow that through and you have a relay and then your ground and obviously it looks aftermarket it's not oem but they did it so nicely that it looked OEM. and i had to take all these apart to find it and confirm that it is a relay kit so <clears throat> it just confirms that the car was possibly track and and or they just they did it right they did it right yeah they didn't just so. throw a chipped ecu in it and let her eat like this thing was probably too, well i mean it had to have been tuned i guess yeah so so that's one thing less we gotta do. We'll still do the pump. What's this baby getting? The good old... Choo-choo. No, the DW400. Oh. The same pump we put in every car. Yes, yeah, we're just gonna use a dish 400. Any That's why we use right on now? everything. Does HKS make fuel pumps? Because I feel like if they do, it probably is an HKS pump. I don't know if they make pumps. It will probably be auto motor, aero motor. I have like a tab going of all like the old crusty JDM bull on here that I'm selling to Tommy for 10x what it should probably go for. So hopefully there's an HKS pump in there and we can make some good money out of this thing. I think those go for a thousand. Twelve hundred for Tommy. Oh my god, it's down my armpit! Alright, I know there's a bunch of random stuff towards the end of this video, but I'm gonna try to give you a quick comprehensive update. I am no longer here. I am at the St. Louis Auto Show. Make sure you come hang out. My next video that you guys will see, uh, which actually is going to be uploading tomorrow, another back-to-back -back video. Uh, reminder, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, we're doing the first ever RTR LZ collab shirt. I'll put a photo of that in a link in the description to remind you, but that will drop tomorrow in tomorrow's video, which will be me driving my first ever RTR demo as an RTR official driver. Marco finished getting this thing stripped. Pretty much every single thing is off of this chassis imaginable. Um, we're going to see if we can get the thing like, uh, not undercoated, but like paint underneath it, clean everything up, paint the bay to get it ready to start refreshing and reassembling. Um, so that's cool. This thing's just getting some love for the next season. It was always kind of like a rush project in this chassis, just like, look at all the little brackets and things and stuff that's been cut and trained. It's rough. But we're gonna try to make it a little bit less rough now that we have time and we wanna clean it up, be a little more presentable for the season. Um, Johan got a bunch of stuff done on this Jay-Z, as you guys saw. Uh, we're waiting on a couple little things, uh, mainly my valve covers are getting back from paint. Um, we have the oh no, intake manifolds getting polished, exhaust manifold we have, and then we're waiting on a couple like fabrication components. Um, the bay is looking sick, ready to go for the engine. And then this thing, got the DW400 in it. Uh, Sean was working on fuel lines on it today, threw some Dishworks injectors in it, and then it's gonna get a standalone back on the dyno and get tuned. So we'll hold you more on that when uh, we get to it, but it'll be interesting to kind of see some of the data that we can get from that turbo turned up on ethanol. And then, you know, down the road, maybe we experiment, we try a couple different Garrett turbos or something, but right now this is the test dummy guinea pig for just a simple RB26 since I never got to do that with my R34. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully, if I can do that, if I can make that happen with my schedule, with another good video. Better guys. When you said